If you struggle with photo editing, there's one major flaw that might be the reason. In this video, I'll reveal what that flaw is, how to fix it, and share a bunch of editing tricks while walking you through the full edit of this photograph. You may notice my studio looks different, and there's a big reason for this, which I'll share in a bit. But let's jump into Lightroom and have a look at what the editing flaw might be. Before I jump into what a huge editing flaw in your workflow might be, I want to quickly clean this image up. It's shot at ISO 4000 and I want to just clean up the noise. Now I'm going to just run this through the AI denoise in Lightroom. I'm going to use an amount of about 35. I think that should be fine for ISO 4000. I'm going to click Enhance and that is going to now create a new DNG file for me to edit on and start the process. Okay, so now we have the new DNG file to work on and I'm just going to make sure all of my sharpening is removed for now. I'm going to go to the basic panel. Now, a lot of people will start editing in Lightroom using the basic panel and doing some global adjustments. So let's try that. I'm going to change my profile to Adobe Standard. I'm going to decrease the exposure a little bit because there's a lot of white on the leopard here. And then I'm going to increase the blacks just to up some of the shadows, mainly on the leopard. I'm not really concerned with the background. That's pure black, basically. And then I'm going to add in some contrast. Now, the problem here is there's a lot of bright highlights on the front of the leopard. I like what the whites are doing in terms of that slider on the body, but I don't like what it's doing on the chest there. So here is already the first problem. If you stick to global adjustments, you're not going to be able to edit this leopard or a subject that has a lot of light on it properly. You might think, okay, let's just drop the highlights. The highlights will do a good job on the front of the leopard here, but it's dropping the highlights on the body of the leopard, and I don't want that. So now I'm at a bit of a crossroads. What do I do? Do I decrease the whites? Do I decrease the highlights? You know, how do I adjust those sliders to balance the entire image. And now the truth is you can't actually do that with pure global adjustments. You can use global adjustments just to fine tune a base exposure, but you definitely need masks to fine tune your image. So in this example, I'm going to increase the whites because I want to make sure they are as bright as possible just as a starting point. So I've increased the whites until they're just blowing out on the chest there. I like what the whites are doing to the body there, like I said earlier. So now to balance out this exposure, I'm going to use masks. There are a couple issues here. The back leg there is too bright. It's competing for attention. I want the attention to be on the face. Now this very bright area on the chest is demanding a lot of attention. Remember, the human eye is drawn to very bright areas and it will often overlook very dark areas. So keep that in mind when you are adjusting your images. So in this example, I'm going to take a radial gradient. I'm going to create one over there. And then I'm going to drop the whites and the highlights. You could decrease the exposure. The problem is it's going to decrease the exposure on the very dark areas of that section as well. So I don't really want to affect the very dark areas. I'm purely going to just affect the highlights there. So that is the before and after. Maybe it's a bit too far, so I might just drop it down. You can also intersect that with a luminance range. If you now see on this overlay, those are the affected areas with that mask. Might just feather those out a little bit there. Maybe get rid of some of those very dark shadows. I don't want to decrease the exposure there. So then again with highlights and whites. I like to use the whites and highlights to decrease exposure in bright areas because those will naturally target very bright areas and work slightly differently to exposure. Let's create another radial mask, this time for the front of the leopard here. Let's decrease the highlights and drop down the whites a little bit. Maybe a little bit of exposure as well. A little bit there. So there's the before and the after. So you can see just through those two masks, we've drawn a bit more attention to the face of the leopard, which we want. Now I'm going to go back to my basic panel. I'm going to check those whites again, holding on Alt, and I'm going to raise them until they start burning out, just to, as a point of reference. I really want to keep those whites quite bright. So that at a value of 56 is now the point of where there are details starting to clip but they are more in the face now and not so much in the other parts of the leopard. But I'm just going to drop that slightly. I don't want them to be that bright. So why does my studio look different? Well, I'm in the process of creating my brand new wildlife photography Lightroom editing course called the Wildlife Edit. This course goes way beyond free YouTube tutorials and I'm revealing 
all my editing secrets, including my never before shared editing vision system. Check out the link in the description for more info and master the art of wildlife photo editing. I'm also offering a special 20% launch discount, so sign up through the link in the description to take advantage of that saving when it launches. Now there's another area for concern, and that's on the face here. The whites, or the highlights here are really, really strong, so let's add another radial gradient over the face there. Drop down the exposure slightly and maybe just more highlights than anything. Actually, let's just increase the size of that. Drop down the exposure for that effect there. That might be too strong. Let's just drop down the amount. Just trying to balance that out a little bit better. Now let's crop the image. I'm going to get rid of some of this distraction on the left-hand side. We don't need that. That's not forming part of the image at all. Maybe just crop it a little bit there to place the eyes on that third line roughly and just give a little bit of space on the right-hand side for about that effect there. I'm going to use a radial gradient over this bright section on the left-hand side. So let's create another one here. Just a long, thin one. Decrease the highlights and then just decrease the exposure. And then I'm going to also do the same on this bright area here. I don't like that grass, so I could just clone that out. But I think in this example, I'd like to leave it in. It just adds a little bit to the scene. Let's take another radial gradient. Let's first work on this brighter area here. And that's not really that interesting. Just drop the exposure. Let's just make another radial gradient for this section. Let's just drop that exposure. I might then choose a brush. Let's zoom into this branch. I want to decrease the exposure of this branch. So let's create a brush mask. Let's just paint over that section very broadly. I'm not going to worry that it's going over the edges. Then I'm going to intersect that with a luminance range. Place my luminance range selector over that very bright area. Now that is going to become my mask there. What I might do is I might just feather this out. So I'll go subtract brush. I'm going to create a large brush with a feather of 100. Just going to feather that out just so there's no hard edges on any of those bottom details there. So I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to take the highlights, just drop down the highlights a bit. And then I might cool down that section just slightly, just takes away a bit more attention. So you can see just through darkening and maybe cooling down a little bit, we've taken the attention away from that very bright area there. Might be a bit too much. Let's just decrease the amount of that mask. I like what it's looking like at the top of that piece of grass. I wanna just darken this section here. I'm just going to create another brush just there. Intersect that with a luminance range again and then just decrease just that bottom part there. All right, that's looking good. Let's get into some more creative editing. I'm going to check the white balance. Might just warm this up very slightly. Play around with the magenta tint around about there. I'm happy with the overall brightness of the leopard. I just want to maybe create a slight more bit of darkness to the image. So I'm going to drop the exposure, raise the blacks, maybe add a little bit of contrast just to increase the drama a little bit there. And then some clarity to just enhance the contrast in the midtones a little bit. I think the saturation is fine. Let's play around with some negative vibrance. I don't want too much color in this image. I want it to be slightly desaturated. I think that's looking nice. I'm going to add what I like to call the black fade effect. So I'm going to go to my free Lightroom tools pack here. I'm going to choose black fade one. That is just going to fade the blacks. You can see it's now added a nice effect to those blacks there. I'm not going to use it at that full effect. I'm just going to drop the amount perhaps maybe to about 40 or so, it's looking good. And then I want to add some cool to the shadows with color grading, it's looking nice there. I might just limit that, that effect. It just adds a little bit of color contrast to the image. And then what I might do is I actually might want to add a slight blue tint to the blacks on the image. So I'm going to go to tone curve, going to go to the blue channel, Going to create a whole bunch of points here to limit the movements of the curve. I'm only really focusing on the dark, dark section here. So I hope you can see it, but you can see as I raise that point up, it's adding blue to the shadow. Now, obviously that's too much. So I just want to just add a very small amount of blue to the image in the dark areas. 
I want to go down to the calibration just to increase the saturation of the blue channel just to see what that looks like. And I'm quite liking that. Now, just looking at the image, I feel like the left-hand side of the leopard is still a little bit distracting. So I'm going to take a linear gradient and to drag it across the image like that. And I'm just going to slightly darken that point just to make it a little bit darker. So it's taking away attention from that point there. Then what I might do is just add a radial gradient to create a vignette around the image, which I highly encourage you to do rather than using the effects vignette. This is a much more customizable way to do that. Okay, that's looking nice. Let's just go back to exposure. I think the image is getting slightly darker through all of those effects. That's nice there, just bringing back some brightness to the image. I feel like the chest has got a bit strong again. So let's just go down to the mask that was covering that area. Drop down those highlights slightly. And maybe the mouth as well is getting a little bit too strong. I'll just change the placement of that. And then I'm going to change the color of the leopard's fur slightly, just towards more of a red color. Not, not red, but more orange actually. And then maybe just slightly decrease saturation in the entire image. So that is the original raw file. And this is the final edit. Sometimes global edits aren't enough and that's where masks come in. But there are plenty of other ways to improve your editing. In this video, I share 20 Lightroom tips that will help you get better at your editing faster.